Hello, welcome back to another session of General Chemistry 1. My name is Daniel, and today we're going to be looking at reaction stoichiometry. So that's just the same thing as we did last lecture, except now we're going to be looking at chemical reactions instead of isolated compounds. So what exactly is a chemical equation? A chemical equation just looks like this. We have reactants on the left side that turn into products that we see on the right side. In this case, we have A plus B reacts to form C plus D, just some arbitrary compounds. Now, the, a chemical reaction entails the breaking of reactant bonds. So we break the bonds here. And then we reform those bonds in different variations to form the product. So here we're forming bonds. So we first break reactant bonds, and then we form product bonds. Now, due to the law of conservation of mass, the atoms on each side of a chemical reaction have to be the same. So for example, if I had two carbons and two hydrogens here on the reactant side, I would have to have two carbons and two hydrogens on the right side as well. And we're going to use that fact to balance our equations, look at our stoichiometry, and do our calculations with stoichiometry. Now this also applies to the mass of reactants. So if I added up the total mass of either side of one of these reactions, it should be the same. Okay. We can also get physical states from chemical equations. Now what I mean by that is solid, liquid, gas, etc. So the notation we'll use for that is usually a subscript. So we have subscript S is a solid, subscript S L is a liquid, subscript G is a gas. And what most of our reactions occur in is what's called aqueous solutions, AQ. And that just means dissolved in water. We'll get more into that in the next unit. But those are the four common ones that will be in our chemical equations. So since we have to have the same number of atoms on each side of our equation, we have to make sure it's balanced. So if we take a look, let's look at this equation. We see CH4 plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. Now off the bat, we can see that we only have two hydrogens over here, whereas we have four hydrogens here. So we need to balance our reaction in order to make sure that each side has the same number of hydrogens. So first off, we're going to balance our hydrogens, being that that was the one that had the most clear problem. So all we do there is add this 2. We add this 2. Now we have four hydrogens, four hydrogens. But because we multiplied the entirety of water's molecule by 2, now on this side we have 2 and 4, four oxygens, whereas the left side only has two oxygens. So now we need to balance our oxygens. And we're just going to do that. So to balance our oxygens, we're just going to add a 2 over here. And now we can see on each side, if we count up all our atoms, we have 1 carbon, 4 hydrogens, 4 oxygen. And on the product side, we have the same thing. So now we can say that our equation is balanced. And we're ready to do whatever we need to with it. OK? So let's look at some examples of balancing equations. Uh, try this out on your own first, okay? The second one, you just have to write out the equation, and you should be able to do that based on the naming system we've went over. So I'll give you a second to pause the video and do that. Okay, let's start then. So the first one, FES plus ALCl3 goes to FeCl2 plus Al2S3. So let's see, what needs to be balanced? On this side, we have one iron, we have one sulfur, one aluminum, and three chlorine. On the right side, we have one iron, three sulfur, oops, two aluminum, and two chlorine. So clearly, we have a lot to do here. Let's first look at the sulfur. So sulfur on the right side has three we see that the only source of sulfur on the left side is this FES. So let's multiply that by 3. So now we'd have 3FES plus ALCL3 goes to FECL2 plus AL2S3. So now our sulfurs are balanced, 
but our irons aren't balanced. We have three iron on this side. We have one iron on this side. Now, in order to alleviate that, let's multiply FeCl2 by 3 as well to balance out our irons. So now we get 3FeS plus AlCl3 goes to 3FeCl2 plus Al2S3. So our irons are now balanced, our sulfurs are balanced. The last thing we need to address is our chlorine. So chlorine over here has 3. Chlorine over here now has 6. That's just 2 times 3. So what we need to do is multiply our aluminum chloride by 2. So if we do that, I'll just go over here. We have FeS with a 3 plus AlCl3 with a 2 goes to 3FeCl2 plus Al2S3. That's our balanced equation. We can confirm that by doing an atom count. So on the left side, we have, draw a divide, three irons, three sulfurs, two aluminum, and uh, six chlorine. On the right side, we have three iron, six chlorine, two aluminum, and three sulfur. So everything checks out for that, and that's our balanced equation right here. Okay? Now for the second one, it says aqueous hydrochloric acid reacts with aqueous calcium hydroxide to form solid calcium chloride in water. So we would need to first write out the chemical equation based on the words and names we're given, and that's pretty easy to do with our naming system. Just going to turn out to this. So now let's balance this. So first thing off we see do, do, do. We see that our chlorines are unbalanced. We have two chlorine over here, Oops. and one chlorine over here. So let's multiply HCl by 2. So now we get 2HCl plus calcium hydroxide goes to calcium chloride plus H2O. Okay, so now our chlorines are balanced. Let's see then. Okay, if we do a count now, we have two hydrogens, two chlorines, one calcium, and we have two OH groups, so that's going to contribute 2O and 2H. So this, is ac this H here is actually four hydrogens. So we're just going to say we have one calcium, two chlorine, four hydrogen, two oxygen. On the right side, we have one calcium, two chlorine, two hydrogen, one oxygen. So we need to balance out our hydrogens and oxygens now. We have two and one on the product side and four and two on the reactant side. So we can just simply finish that balancing by just multiplying our water by two. So that will give us the balanced reaction 2HCl plus CaOH2 goes to CaCl2 plus 2H2O. And if you counted the numbers of atoms of each one there, it would turn out to be balanced. Okay, so balancing reactions just kind of requires you to go in, see what's not balanced, and kind of work through it. And eventually you'll get everything balanced. I'd recommend doing lots of practice problems on this just so you have a knack for looking where to start and how to progress in balancing reactions. Okay? Now that we're done with that, we're going to progress into reaction stoichiometry. So with our balanced reaction from problem one, we can notice a few things, particularly about the ratios of our compounds that we're using. So we have a three to we have a three to three ratio of iron sulfide to iron chloride. That just goes down to one to one. We have three to one ratio of iron sulfide to aluminum sulfide. We have a 2 to 3 ratio of aluminum chloride to F iron chloride. And we have a 2 to 1 ratio of aluminum chloride to aluminum sulfate. Now, what